Mate, and uh, thanks for checking in at markgallard.com. I hope you've had the chance now to take a look at the Roger Federer training video, which is adjacent to the one here on the homepage. And what I'd like to do is discuss a few things that were in that video that can help you uh, improve your own tennis game. I've found five things in that video that I would like to address in this short demonstration here and explain the purpose of each drill and how it can help you improve the way you play. And the five areas I'd like to talk about is agility, racket speed, complex training, weights, and plyometrics and each of those things I'd like to go through and just make a couple of points about it and give you a demonstration of how it can help your game improve. And the first thing I'd like to talk about is agility. What is agility? Well agility can basically be defined as the ability to start, stop, change direction and maintain balance while doing all of these things at high speed. Now during a tennis point you're expected to be able to perform 300 to 500 bursts of energy and during a regular point you can have four or more changes of direction and it's very important that we maintain a good center of gravity and balance. Now what you saw in the Federer training video you saw him actually using bands and doing things of this nature and this is to work his agility and bands just like the one shown here can be wrapped around your ankles and they can be used uh, when doing agility drills to improve your, your flexion in your hips and your flexibility but also strength and your ability to move side to side. Now don't forget, 70% of tennis is a lateral movement, it's side to side. So make sure when you're working on your sprints that you're not just working forwards and backwards. You've got to work a lot side to side because that is the most important part of tennis. Now, the second thing I'd like to talk about from that video is racket speed. What is racket speed and why is it important to tennis? Well, one thing that all the best players in the world have is great racket head speed. And this is very important at any level because this is the end of the kinetic chain, which comes from the ground up, through the legs, through the core, through the upper body, the arm, and out in the racket. And if the kinetic chain is working great but we don't have racket speed, then we lose the efficiency of the technique. So the racket speed is very important. And what I have demonstrated here today is a weighted racket. Now, there is research in this, and a weighted racket, if we can swing a weighted racket 150 times a day, four times a week, with a weighted racket that's 10% heavier or lighter than our regular racket, we can have significant gains in our racket speed. Now, if you want to gain more racket speed, you can take make the racket slightly uh, lighter or slightly heavier, depending on exactly what you're trying to work. For this purpose of this, this is 10% heavier than a regular racket. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to swing this racket 150 times on the forehand side. Four times a week, 150 times per day. And if we can do this for 12 weeks, we should see significant gains. And this is very, very important if we want to be a professional tennis player. Now, just in that video, I want to point out that you did see Roger using a fan type racket on his uh, on, on his drill and that's very very similar to this which you can make yourself or you can just buy a cover to go over your racket but really easy to use and a great training method easily fits in your bag so you can use it before tournaments as a warm-up uh, or even as a part of a, uh, of, a, of a workout exercise now the third area I want to talk about a very important area is complex training and a lot of people don't understand what complex training is but it uses really the stretch shortening cycle of muscles. Imagine an elastic band. When you pull that elastic band and then you let it go, it's got all this potential energy when you pull that elastic band and when you let it go, that's where the explosion comes. And this is what we're basically, your muscles are working in the same way as an elastic band. You pull it and you let it go and that's the explosion. And what I'm gonna do here is I wanna demonstrate to you how he used in the video uh, with Roger, you saw him performing overhead throws. Now. What he was doing there is he's activating his upper body muscles that he's going to be using in a serve, which is also an overhead action. He's activating them by doing three or four overhead throws and then immediately serving. And this should transfer to his serve so he gets a little bit more power. Now the important thing that I want you to understand, this is called post-action potentiation. This is where we take an exercise, like serving, a tennis-specific drill, and we pair it with a gym exercise or a regular weight exercise like we saw Roger doing there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate how this exercise can be done, but we can use the lower body. What we saw with Roger was him activating his upper body muscles. I'm now going to do that in a similar way. I'm going to go and perform five squat jumps with a four pound medicine ball on the baseline. And then I'm going to take my racket and I'm going to serve four balls. Okay.
now. My serves weren't all in, I gotta be honest. But hopefully, doing a drill like this will enable you to get a little more explosion from your legs. Now, like we saw Roger doing it, he was doing it with the upper. You can do both. Now, a little bit tired after that. Fourth thing I wanna focus on is the weight. Now, when we're in the weight room, we have to understand the difference between strength and power. Very, very important we understand this. Strength is just our ability to take a weight and move it. Power is, is in scientific terms, force times velocity. And power is what's important in tennis, not strength. Now, power is equal to force times velocity. Now, what we've got to do is we've got to get the force and the velocity at our maximum levels. For example, Arnold Schwarzenegger, strong guy, but may not be powerful in tennis because it requires explosion, being able to move that arm fast. Okay, so we have two variables, force and velocity, and we can work both of them. But what we have to understand is how we work that in the gym. And what you saw Roger Federer doing in his video was he was working in the gym doing very, very light weights. If you go back and watch the video again, the, the weights he was doing were very, very light. Okay, but he was doing these very, very fast. And you saw him doing some upper body exercises, some lower body exercises, but very lightweight, but very fast. This is because there's two types of muscle fibers. Type one, which is a slow twitch muscle. This is usually common in long distance runners and endurance athletes, and that's not what we need in tennis. We need type two muscle fibers, which are the fast twitch muscle fibers, and that there are two ways that we can work those fibers doing it the way we saw Roger doing it in the video where he does a very light weight, a high repetition and does it fast, or we can lift a very heavy weight and do it a much lower number of repetitions. But both those ways will attack the fast twitch muscle fibers and that's the key because we need to get the fast twitch muscle fibers working and not the slow ones. And that's the problem. A lot of people go to the gym and they go in and they lift a medium weight at a medium speed 10, 12 times. Not gonna attack the fibers that we want in the way that we need. Now, final part of, uh, of this talk that I'd like to discuss in the video was we saw the plyometrics okay and we saw him doing some jumping and this thing is so easy to do on a court as your warm-up or just in practice with some other friends or, or at the end of your, of your of your practice session you can do this because it is for me the most important part of tennis plyometric training involves moving your body in an explosive manner very similar to tennis and I always like to to encourage people that when they're doing these exercises they keep it as tennis specific as they can because the more specific to tennis you can keep the exercise the more easily transferable it is. Uh, for example you see a lot of people going and doing a shuttle drill on the court or a spider drill and they're picking up balls. Well tennis players are not running to a place picking up a ball and then running back. They're running, getting to a place, swinging, a forehand, a backhand, whatever it is, a volley, hitting the ball and then recovering. So try to keep your drills very tennis specific swings at the end of every of every run. Now with the plyometrics, this is basically very easy stuff. Squat jumps, okay? Lunges, uh, any kind of jumping, uh, like you saw Roger doing in the video, he was actually jumping on and off the box, but throwing a ball as well. This is activating his motor skills uh, that we need in tennis, being able to watch a tennis ball, catch it using coordination. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna demonstrate to you now uh, one final drill that I'd like you to see. Uh, that can be done on your own before a practice or after a practice and it's just a good plyometric drill that really helps increase your explosion when you're playing tennis. I hope this one helps you and I hope you enjoyed this video because this will be the last drill here but I hope you can keep checking back for more videos on my website and uh, make sure you take this information and use it in the practice court and help your game get better.